Well, thanks for joining us on this episode. We're actually talking to Ryan Martin. And Ryan Martin, he's a teacher, he's a theologian, he's also the founder of the Kairos Classroom. And this is an online school that offers affordable and accessible courses in New Testament Greek and Old Testament Hebrews and other things. Ryan received his MDiv from Beeson Divinity School, and he actually taught theology and biblical studies at the Christian Bilingual University in Congo. So uh, you can learn more about Ryan and his work at kairosclassroom.com. That's K-A-I-R-O-S classroom.com. We'll, of course, link to that in the show notes for this episode. So, Ryan, thanks so much for joining us on the Reasonably, Reasonable Theology podcast. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. You bet. Now, to start things off, could you share a little bit about yourself and your family and what your ministry looks like with Kairos Classroom? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Aubrey and I have been married for 11 years, and we have two little boys. Uh, Micah's three, and, and Hezekiah is, what, like nine months now? Uh, that's crazy. Um, but yeah, we live in Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, we have lived most recently in, in DR Congo, uh, where I taught at a university there, and kind of feel like our we, we have our heart in two different places and we'll just always you know on certain days wish we were the other place we love we loved our time there but we also love being here in Birmingham um I guess um I I, I think of myself as a bible teacher that's what I'm passionate about that's what I want to do I I uh, right now I'm doing that it, it, with um through the biblical languages uh at the, with Kairos classroom which I'm sure we'll and we'll talk about as 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 we go, but um, but yeah, I I teach Greek for a living, and I love it. It's it's awesome. Yeah, and that's really where we're going to focus a lot on is just uh, that the everyday Christian has the uh, ability and should be encouraged to actually pick up and learn biblical languages, which uh, might seem a pretty daunting task <laughs> for some folks. How did you get into biblical languages yourself? Yeah, that's a great question. I, for me, it was seminary. And um, it was it was a great experience. I was, uh, like you said earlier, Beeson Divinity School, which um, actually one of the reasons that we uh, wound up there was was because of their emphasis on the languages. Uh, that was, was something that's just as a as a Christian interested in, in studying theology, studying uh, the Bible was was really interesting to me. Uh, I, I wanted to learn Greek. I wanted to learn Hebrew. Uh, so I, I took four semesters of Greek, four, I guess I, five, five semesters of Greek, four semesters of Hebrew there uh, with, with some awesome, awesome teachers and, and, and loved it. I didn't know at that point I'd be doing this that I'm doing now. I had no idea. Um, but I really did enjoy those classes and, and enjoyed, yeah, particularly a, uh, a class I took on Romans after, after I went walked through the grammar and the syntax, like an, an elective class. It was just three three students with Frank Thielman and the Book of Romans, and it just, you know, kind of changed, changed my life. Loved it. And still still think of think of that in my own kind of journey with the languages as a, as a time that I'll, I'll never forget, a time that I realized how much, how, how many resources were there in these yeah. things. So, yeah, I had no idea at the time, but I, I definitely loved it. Now, just thinking back to my own time learning, attempting to learn Greek at seminary. Now, were you one of those kids that uh, – I had a hard time loving that just picked this up easy and was, you know, three chapters ahead and was parsing verbs and all these things just for fun. I mean, maybe I, I, I'm certainly a language nerd and I'm, I'm fascinated by how this works. I didn't always I didn't always do great, but I was always I probably bugged my professors with questions and showing up in their office. And um, yeah, I, I loved it. I, I ate it up. Greek, Greek and Hebrew were, were, were super fun. But it's definitely, it, it was by no means easy. I mean, lots and lots of study, lots and lots of hard work for sure. Yeah, it is. It is a ton of work. And, and there are good tools out there like, like yours that we'll, we'll be getting into quite a bit as our conversation goes on. Uh, mm -hmm. But there's good tools and there's good reason for, for going through that difficult work. It was a, an uphill climb for me. Um, some others, it's it's easier just depending on their familiarity with other language and, and English grammar for that matter. Um, but what is the value? And you think of someone who is uh, not in vocational ministry, someone who is not a pastor, someone who's not going to seminary. What would be the value for them to learn biblical Greek or Hebrew? Yeah, what a great question. Um, there is tons of value and more more than half of our students i'd say are not you know haven't been to seminary or in no um no formal ministry role 
Um, uh, the the value is in is in God's word, right? It's it's in it's in the value of the Bible. It's 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 that that we're taking one step closer to um, when we're reading in the Greek or in the Hebrew. Uh, the value is in just a, a slightly closer relationship with 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 the text, reading it like somebody uh, in a, a Jewish Christian in the first century would have read it. Um, the way that, that one of the members of the original audience of one of these documents would have read it. It's one step closer to that. You're not, you're not relying on uh, a, a translator uh, to, to give you the English translation. You know, as thankful and wonderful as those translations are, uh, and, and e- even when the translators do the best job that they possibly can, you know, anybody who's translated, anybody that's learned multiple languages before knows it's just not quite the same. Uh, so the value is just in the proximity to the to the text in its original context, wrestling with the text on its own terms, hearing it, hearing it kind of in an unmediated kind of kind of fashion. Yeah. What is that ancient phrase? Uh, I don't remember what language it comes to us from, but translator traitor and, and just a commentary on the difficulty of really capturing um, and, and conveying. And that's not to say that we don't have reliable scripture in the English language. But we've all been sitting in uh, a ser- through a sermon and having the, the pastor exposit and explain, hey, you see this word, here's what it means, and pulls out all this richness that, frankly, a lot of times the English language just can't carry as much weight as maybe a, a Greek word does. And so you can see the value in that just sitting in a, a, an English-American church with an English Bible translation in your lap. We have that all the time where they explain the meaning of a word and how great it would be to have that command of the language, the familiarity. Now, when we're talking about, you know, someone picking up Greek or, or even Hebrew, are the options either I don't know any Greek or Hebrew or I am fluent in Greek or Hebrew? Like what what are the levels that you kind of help people through and what kind of goals might people set to where there's still a lot of value for them in at least gaining a familiarity with the languages? Yeah, that's um, that's something we, we actually think about a lot, and I mean, I, j- just to be, just to be frank, our goal when we when we start with students like when uh, Greek one or Hebrew one, is that they come out um, on the end of, of Greek four or Hebrew four and they're able to sit down with uh, the text and and work through it on their own. So that's I mean every everything we do is directed towards that goal. Like well, this is we, we believe this is possible. Um, yeah. For anybody, you know, if they, if they take the time and, um, and 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 really keep with it, even when it gets challenging, um, this is this is where our students come out. However, um, to your question, we want students at every step along that journey to be to be enriched and to be better readers of Scripture, to be uh, more attuned to the way that language works, um, more attuned to the way that that uh, Koine Greek works. So that whether they're three weeks into Greek one or you know halfway through Greek three, wherever they are, um, they're they're learning how the New Testament fits together. They're learning how to, uh, for example, how to, how to do word studies without kind of lapsing into these exegetical fallacies that we hear so often. I mean, have you ever? I think with any with any kind of discipline, you've probably heard this phrase like, uh, "just enough to be dangerous," right? Yep. So I, I think that is a that is a such a very meaningful category. <laughs> Um, there's almost nothing worse than somebody just knowing a few Greek words and maybe a few grammar categories and then just like handing them a, uh, a, a, a lexicon and say, hey, go exegete. Right. Um, unless, unless they are aware enough of kind of how translation, how languages work, how, how meaning relates to the text. Um, the flexibility of words, the semantic range and overlap of words. And th- th- these are the kind of uh, uh, cringy. That's what the young people are saying now, right? These are the kind of cringy uses of the Greek that you hear sometimes where it's like, yeah. oh, this, you know, I read this, I read this definition in this dictionary. So I'm just going to take all that meaning and cram it into this right. one particular usage, right? So yep. one thing we take really seriously is that every step along the way, whether whether they're ready to really set loose on the text on their own or whether they're just kind of slowly learning these categories and vocabulary uh, that they're able to use what they have in a really responsible 
mm-hmm. manner that honors the integrity of the text in its original form. Uh, that, that's not ignorant of, of of the way that words and translation are are, are, are challenging or flexible, uh, and, um, and and to be able to use these things well. So so sure, while while our our goal is always we we, we want to crank out people that can sit down with 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 First John at the end of First uh, Greek Four and just kind of read it. You know, mm-hmm. that's our goal. But um, you know, not not everybody's able to able to get that far. Most of our students do finish. Thanks be to God. Um, but um, you know, wherever they are in in that in that journey, um, you know, they're being taught how to how how, how to read well, how to exegete well, just given you know, to use to yeah. use resources responsibly is a big part of it, right? Yeah, and one of those things that you often see or maybe are tempted to commit when you do have just, just that little bit of knowledge uh, is you will find you know, oh, there's all this rich meaning in this uh, Greek or Hebrew word, and you assume that any time the text is using that word, it's using it in that sense and in that way. And, uh, of course, being, you know, if you're a native English speaker, you don't do this. I mean, you don't speak of, of the word caliber. Uh, and, and it always means, you know, always has to do with loading ammunition and, and, and various sizes. And, all. <laughs> right. you know, it's, there's, there's different nuances to meaning. Yes, for sure. I mean, this is never... We never ever, no matter how far we zoom in, um, you know, we we never ever want to lose the forest. Um, words don't sit in isolation by themselves, just like, you know, there to be unpacked. There's uh, the words to, that get their meaning from their connection to other words, uh, and I think you could keep going with that. I mean, a, you know, a paragraph finds its meaning in its context in a larger argument. Um, so yes, absolutely. We, we, we need to place these things in their context and, and understand them in that, um, and, and, you know, in, in where they are in whatever book or, or, or you know, whatever, whatever text they're in. I mean, the, the your caliber example is great. I, I use, I use trouble with my students. I say like, if I say like, I was, um, I, I was in trouble with the law when I was a teenager versus like, uh, I, I was having trouble setting up my Wi-Fi at the Airbnb like right. both of those uses of the word trouble yep. fit under like the dictionary right. definition of the word trouble, right? Yep. But if I were to import meaning from one of those uses into another, I'd end up with something very bizarre, right? Right, yeah. I, I love my wife. I love my kids. I love Cherry Pepsi. And if you assume <laughs> absolutely <laughs> that I mean it in the same way to the same degree, uh, you've got a, a pretty perverse <laughs> individual's yes. uh, fascination with, with sugary soda. So. Yes. Um, your, your goal with Kairos Classroom is, is truly to walk alongside someone all the way to where they really have a command of the language, but at the same time, you want to make sure that there's fruit that they are able to enjoy at each stage of that journey, making sure they're getting something out of it. And, and that probably really keeps them encouraged, I imagine. Oh, for sure. I, I tell students there's kind of two curves. There's like a reading curve, which is um, very slow, very flat for a long time, and then and then ramps up. You know, you finish Hebrew one, still can't read much of the Old Testament on your own. Finish Hebrew two, still can't read much. Hebrew three, okay, some. Hebrew four, it's like, oh my goodness, I can sit down and just go. Yeah. Um, but there's another curve, which I, I would say is just like kind of the the curve of, of of exegetical understanding, of interacting with an exegetical commentary, of understanding the language, and, and there's fruit very gradual along the way. I mean, lesson three of, of, of Greek one, we're talking about the the noun cases. And when you open up a commentary and say, oh, this is a this is a subjective genitive. Like, you know, the student's been taking Greek for three weeks. It's like, oh, my goodness, I know what that is. Like, <laughs> I just started this, but I, I can interact with this scholarship and um, and understand what it, what, it, what it means. I can see these things when I open up my my Greek text. Uh, so yes, very well said. The reading curve is slow, but um, fruit all along the way. Yeah. And now how has having, and you've been doing, uh, studying languages for years, and obviously now you're teaching languages, so I think mm-hmm. it's safe to assume that you've got a, uh, a strong command uh, of, of the languages that you're teaching. Uh, how has that enriched your own Bible study? How has that enriched your relationship with the scriptures? Man. Uh, in so many ways. Uh, one thing, I think I'm like borderline attention deficit something. I don't know. I'm a very, like my brain is just always going. 
and I, I grew up uh, in the church, and um, you know, thank God. I'm so thankful for that. But one, I mean, one of the, if, if you can even call it a downside with that, I mean, there, there, there are passages in the New Testament that I feel like I've heard and known from from the cradle to now. Um, I don't know, like 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 G- Jesus and Nicodemus in John three, or Sermon on the Mount, or big big. Uh, big, big chunks of Paul. Uh, it's like, I feel like I, I, I practically have this memorized without trying, right? Well, the downside of that is that it almost like loses your brain almost just kind of, or at least my brain kind of shuts off when that's going. Um, I found out real quick when I was learning Greek that when I walk through these in the original language, it's almost like reading it again for the first time. And maybe even things that I w- could have been able to see in English, uh, I've been forced to slow down and take it word by word, phrase by phrase. Um, and like, man, I'm getting goosebumps right now. I've, I, I just like, there, there are texts that just like have come alive for me. It's like, I've read this a million times and, and, and right. now I'm seeing the same thing, but it's just like becomes a part of you. And, um, at like, I, I could tell you right now, like, like, tell me a book, give me a, give me a book of the New Testament. I could tell you which parts I've really broken down in Greek uh, in detail, working with the commentary, and like it's almost like they're a part of me. Uh, yeah. I know them. I know them really well, and they stick with me more. So I, I think, like, if I if I were to pick one answer to that question, to be that I just texts that I work through in the original language, like really, really stick with me. Um, I think maybe maybe more broadly, understanding just how the Greek language works. Uh, even if I'm reading in English or hearing a sermon, yeah. uh, it's like I just have a sense of like, here's how the text is flowing. Oh, I bet that's a participle. I bet that's, um, you know, um, it's uh, it, it really does change the way that you approach the text. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a question asker. I'm a, I'm, I'm a push on things. I like to follow ideas and, 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 and dig and hear what people say. And for me, it's just like um, I, I, I love it. I love being able to to be to let my fascination kind of drive me into a better understanding of God's word and, and, and come out with, with just a deeper understanding of, of, of what the Lord has for us in it. Right. Yeah. And I imagine it gives you a, a, a much greater appreciation for the work of the translator <laughs> as well. When uh, you see just how complex uh, a task it is. And it's interesting to hear you, uh, you're just reminding me of what it's like sitting in that room and laboring for an hour over a sentence and how it really does it does it forces you to slow way 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 down and mm-hmm. and wrestle with okay you know what is this verb doing who who is it referencing here and you know trying to, to gain all that and it does you can take a familiar passage you've heard a hundred times and very it's very difficult to force yourself to hear it with fresh ears very difficult mm-hmm. if you've grown up in the church and you've heard uh, you've heard the, that passage many times. It's very difficult to hear it anew, but then you try to try to write it out from from Greek to English, uh, and your your eyes are open to a lot of things. Yes. Now, so true. When you sit down to read your Bible, what are you reading? Are you are you devotionally? In your Greek text, do you have one of those Bibles where it's Greek on one page, English on the other? Do you mix it back and forth? What does that look like for you? Man, back and forth. I mean, I, I feel like um, I, I spend I spend a lot of time in the Greek just as a teacher, especially now that for the last uh, six months, really, we, we've had enough students that have finished Greek 4 and are like, okay, now what? Um, we're, we have exegesis courses that are, that are right. walk through portions of Scripture uh, that are um, the, all the students have learned Greek either with us or in a seminary or university. Um, so, man, like one of my favorite parts of my job is preparing for those courses. Uh, I guess basically just like, okay, like I've got, to, um, I'm about to walk with, we've got six students in a class on Ephesians right now. Uh, and it's just like, here's the chunk. I need to, I, I need to know this, this text backwards and forwards before we meet so I can help these new Greek students that have just kind of gotten their feet under them, their legs under them in terms of the grammar and syntax, like help them untie it. Uh, and that's extreme. I, this might have sound like dry academic, I don't know, whatever. It is extremely devotionally significant to me. Um, like as I work through the text and I'm consulting commentaries and asking the question, like I was just like, okay, what is the like, 
uh, what is the antecedent of this participle? I mean, so often the answer to that question is something that's incredibly theologically significant. Um, and, and, and it's exciting. It's like, wow, like, like how great, just, just, can I just throw an example your way? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So like, um, you know, doing Ephesians right now, we, we just did Ephesians two, I guess, um, the first ch- like, like through verse 10 last week. Um, and that like being, being raised with and, and made alive together with Christ, raised with Christ, seated with Christ. Um, you know, it's all one word in Greek, you know, raised with, seated with. And those are the same words that are used in chapter one without the, without the with to talk about what God did to Jesus, right? Uh, to talk about God having vindicated Christ or raising him from the dead and seating him above all, all powers, right? Well, here, you know, 10 verses later, we get those same verbs of what Christ, what, what God has done for us in Christ. And it's the same words, but with, mm. with, with, um, I mean, how like this, this, the, 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 the privilege of our union with Christ and what this means for us as sinners who are, are reconciled to God through our union with Jesus. And it's something that, you know, you just don't, when you're reading in English, you just don't see it. You just don't yeah. see, oh, wow, that's the same word. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's moving. that's something you get from reading the commentary. But boy, is yeah. it, boy, does that help me get out of bed in the morning? You know? Yeah. And how enriching that, to, uh, in some ways. And I don't mean that you you see something in the text that nobody else sees. If so, uh, you're wrong. Um, yeah. But how how enriching to kind of make these discoveries on your own to to sit there with the text and and f- learn something through your own labor and just have that hit you. I, what a what a tremendous gift that is that really is only available if you do the work to to learn the languages so who who are your students i mean do you have uh people preparing for seminary those who uh maybe had uh some some knowledge and forgot it and those who are starting at zero what does your typical student look like uh yes all of the things that you just said um it's it it is it, it does not cease to amaze me Um, the different kinds of people that end up in our classes. Um, They have nothing in common in terms of age, like level of education, um, men, women, young, old, people in formal vocational ministry, things are not. Um, What they have in common is is that they love the Bible. And and that's about it, which is is awesome. What what it means is that the, the kinds of people that are sitting together in our classes, it's like, I feel like, sometimes I feel like this is the only thing in the world that would bring these yeah. people together. Um, but, it's, but, but it's a love for God's word and a desire to understand what it says on its own terms. Uh, so, yes, I'd say like uh, maybe, maybe a little more than half, um, 50, 60% of our students are just theologically interested church members mm-hmm. that are either just like, you know, the curious types that like, you know, go and read theology books for fun, um, which I would imagine that was a lot of your audience, if I had to guess. Yeah, th- right? Those are my people. Those are your people. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've got a lot of those people too. And those are some yeah. of my favorite people on this earth, right? Yeah. Um, so a, a lot of those folks. And then, I don't know, maybe maybe the other 40% are um, either going into seminary and want to leg up. Um, they're in, I got a few students that are in seminary and they just like, I just need all the help I can get. I'm going to take this other, this other program too. Um, more common, I've got several like pastors, teachers that have, that learned Greek, uh, in school and didn't keep it up, learned Hebrew in school, didn't keep it up. And this is a very effective and convenient way to get it back. Yeah. Yeah, I, I am, I definitely would land in, in that box of, they they tell you every day if you don't use it you lose it and uh, turns out they weren't lying so they were not lying so it's they? nice to have an option like this so so let's picture someone that really is starting at zero they're aware that mm-hmm. you know New Testament's Greek the Old Testament's in Hebrew they've heard the pastor explain and expound on words like agape uh, so they have some really really basic familiarity uh, with, with the biblical languages and they've, you know, seen some commentary work and, and things like that. Uh, can you talk us through, like, what does that journey look like working with Kairos Classroom? What, what does, how does the, what is the format of the training? What does it look like to take someone from zero to they're able to read, like you said, they're reading first John in Greek. Uh, what does that look like? Yeah, it's, it, it really is, is remarkably simple. Um, they meet once a week in a live online class. 
uh, meets ni- 90 minutes once a week. All of our all of our Greek and Hebrew classes are 90 minutes once a week. And then our teachers expect about that same amount of time outside of class, about 90 minutes of personal work once a week. Um, so that's, that's three hours a week um, to wow. basically get to where you can work through a text on your own after, after four class, after a year, after four or nine week classes. Um, so it's, it's online, it's live, it's, it's with, um, with qualified instructors who are both Bible nerds and down to earth people, you know, people that love to teach and it's student focused. So students are working through things and asking questions and, 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 and pushing back and asking, Hey, can you repeat that again? It's all live, all live and all online. Um, yeah, very, um, I, I don't know. Like we all have, all of our teachers, we laugh all the time. We all have kind of these like nightmares from our seminary trainings of just like being called to like parse on something in front of all your classmates, you know. It's like we all have, yeah. if, if you took Greek and Hebrew and you don't have like nightmares about this, then you're lying. Like let's just be <laughs> honest, right? Um, so we want to do something that's, that's a little bit more laid back, made for busy people. Um, this, this just is effective. Like we, we really believe that people learn languages better when they're enjoying themselves. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think the pedagogy, the research backs that up, um, not just in languages, but in anything. Um, uh, so we, we try to foster that environment, uh, an environment of curiosity and, and of exploration and of, of learning these things, recognizing that every student's going to kind of learn these things in different ways and at different paces. So we, a lot of repetition, uh, a lot of giving students time to process and ask questions. Um, but yeah, just to, just to answer as, as simply as possible, it's just meeting once a week with a group and doing a little bit of vocab memorization and um, translating on your own. So I mean, you're confident that uh, just the, the average everyday Christian that's, that's listening to this, that's watching this conversation, you and your team can take them, hold their hand, walk them, walk alongside them, and they can learn biblical greek and hebrew i mean like i've seen it happen over and over again like dozens and dozens of times um it's not i mean the the students that persevere to the end and make this a part of their lives they're not the smarty pants language people they're not um they're not just the they're, 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 they're people that want it and that make the space in their life for it and yeah. by space we're talking about three hours a week i'm not talking about sure. quit, quit your day job yeah. Um, students, students that are consistent and engaged and, and, and do their work. I mean, they make it like, uh, I mean, like, and I, I don't know, maybe, maybe you've, you've studied French or, or Spanish. Or like we, we learned French before we moved to Congo and there's no way, there's no way that in three hours a week <laughs> for a year, you could like be competent in French. Um, but the difference is, is that when we were learning French, we had to learn how to speak right and listen and write and read and 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 the vocabulary that we need to know in normal conversation about just like doing life is is is, is expansive right um with with a biblical language you're limited to the vocabulary of uh, i mean like i I mean of course you can go beyond this you know you can you can you can take a step in the classical direction and learn plato you know you know whatever sure um but in terms of like new testament exegesis you're 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 learning the vocabulary of the new testament um, Koine Greek is, I mean, it, it's a langa franca. It's like a, it's, it's, it's one of those languages that was adopted by lots of people and simplified for the sake of practicality. Um, so it's, it's an easier language, um, as, as far as languages go. And you're just learning to read and recognize, you yeah. know, you don't have to be able to pull the past tense of raised out of your head. You just have to recognize right. it when you see it on the page. And that's a much yeah. lower bar. And that's why you can get through it in a year. Yeah, I recall in learning, uh, going through our Greek lessons, even early on, being struck by, you know, our, our textbook would have a little kind of meter at the bottom of, you have now, if you've kept up with your vocabulary, you've you've memorized 30% of the words in the, in the New Testament, because it really it is a limited, you're talking about a closed canon, this is a limited number of words, they can count them, mm-hmm. uh, and so your vocab is not endless, it, it's, it's kind of there, and, and just like English, I mean, I'm sure if somebody's probably done this, but if someone sat down and really counted of all the, the many, many, many thousands, millions, I don't know, uh, English words, how many do you actually use in a week? <laughs> probably not a very big percentage. And, and so maybe it's not as daunting as someone might think. 
but at the end of the day, there's probably people listening and say, oh yeah, that sounds nice. I could never do that. Like that's, that's beyond me. Um, if someone has an interest in learning the biblical languages, uh, they, they have a desire, they, they would like to, but they just feel like this would be too difficult to accomplish. What would be, you know, one or two pieces of advice you have for them to really get them to, to, to attempt that and see that, they, no, this is possible and it is worthwhile. Um, I mean, it, it is possible and it is worthwhile. I mean, you can't, I, I have seen so many different types of people with, with different gifts and passions and fears and excitements make it through and are now, you know, no, no Greek. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so you, you can do it. I mean, really, really you can. Um, it's not, it, it, it's work. You know, sometimes, sometimes it feels more like work than others. You know, I like it's, we, we try to have fun. Um, it, it is work, but, but it, it's possible and, and you can do it. It's, it's, um, we, we walk you through it. I mean, we work with right. you They're not doing this on their own. what gaps are there and we fill them with you. Like that, that's what we're here to do. That's our job. Right. And that's, that's the value of using uh, a resource like this, like Kairos Classroom is, is you're not just sitting down with a book. You're sitting down with people that, that teach these languages and alongside a handful of others learning right with you. They're at the same step you are. So that I can see a lot of value into this kind of format where they have that benefit of, of a smaller group, but they're in a group. They're not by themselves. They can hear other people uh, mispronounce something and get corrected. They can be corrected. <laughs> they can ask questions and, and really walk through that step by step. And, and no one's no one's promising that you're going to go from zero to fluent in a week. So it, it's step by step one foot in front of the other and you're there to walk them to walk them through that essentially you're absolutely right i mean it's like we believe and we say this all the time that like we were we were meant to learn in community um and i mean i've tried i mean like it's i'm 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 going back through hebrew right now with kairos um just because i you know like like clay you said with greek i haven't i haven't kept yeah. up my, my my hebrew very well um, it's, it's been great. And do you know how many times in the last like 10 years I've, I've tried to go back and like relearn the Hebrew on my own, you know, I make it five chapters in and then something else in life kind of comes up and right. I, I fall off. This is the, it's the best kind of accountability. Right. And, and the, it, it, it's all the right kinds of social pressures, isn't it? It's like, man, I need to, I'm, I'm part of this cohort. We're in this together and I need to, I, I need to do my work and I need to keep up with this and, and continue kind of, kind of pushing, pushing along. Uh, it really is a blessing, and it's fun to watch our students get to know each other. Uh, and and you're right about it feeling it, it feeling like you're going back to the beginning, and that that's hard, and it's nice to have other people. I've got one student that says, um, "It's like it's like I'm back in the first grade." It's like yeah, like you are. You're back. <laughs> you're 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 in Greek first grade. You you are learning your alphabet. Yeah. <laughs> so own it and and enjoy it. And know that there's no such thing as sounding silly. Like we're all we're all in this together, and um, it really is just a, kind of a, a celebration of God's word, of, of of the strengths and weaknesses that we all have when we're in a community, and just uh, in, enjoying kind of embarking on this together. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad you said that. Yeah. Uh, so it's kind of as we wind down our conversation here. What is some advice that you give to someone who might just happen to already be learning? Maybe they're in seminary right now and they're learning. Uh, Greek or Hebrew, or someone who's learning with you, what's some advice you have for the the new biblical language student? How can you kind of make the most of it? And are there any tips that you have to maybe make that a little bit of a smoother process? Yes, and this is this is such a different answer than I would have given five years ago before I you know but before I was teaching this all the time. Um, vocab. My advice is vocab, and here's why. Um, when you fall behind on your vocabulary, uh, translating becomes less fun. Yeah. It becomes stressful because you're doing, you're looking back and forth from your notes to your book, your notes to your book. Um, you lose the flow of the text. I would say when things get busy, when things get crazy, if if you're in seminary right now and you're learning Greek, um, just don't, don't fall behind on your vocab. And if you are behind on your vocab, yeah, I've been there. We've all, yeah. we've all been there. You, you, if, if you learned, if you've learned a, less, uh, a language, you've been there. Um, prioritize getting caught up. 
so many good ways to do it. Make flashcards, make lists in a book and like fold over a piece of paper and try to write the, like there's so many different ways you can do that. But yep. here's, what, here's what I'm finding more and more the more I teach. Um, students that are, that are up on their vocab, that know their vocab, even, even if the grammar's hard, even if, even if they come with incompleted translation homework sometimes, students that are up on their vocab can figure it out. And because they know the word that's there, maybe they don't recognize this ending or whatever, but then the gears are turning and they're able to kind of figure out other things inductively. Um, I don't, unless you can get in a time machine and go back to first century you know, Mediterranean world, you, it's gonna be really hard for you to pick up on enough vocab inductively just by like exposure. Right. Um, however, I think the inverse might be true. That if you know your vocab really well, you can start to recognize some of the some some of these grammatical and syntactical patterns, because you know these words and you know how they're functioning. Um, and I really think, like, let, let's say you're sitting in your Greek two exam at your seminary where you're at right now, if you know the vocab words on this on this like translation exercise they give you, you know, you can fiddle around with it and probably figure out something pretty close, right? To where if if you're if you're out on your vocab, you don't even know what to fiddle with. Um, so I, I've seen with my students, like when things get busy, when things get crazy, if they can just stay up on their vocab, just just only five, five, ten minutes a, a day, maybe even every couple of days, um, just just to keep it fresh. If they can stay, stay current on their vocab, it'll make a huge difference. Mm. Not only will you do better, but you'll enjoy it more. It'll be more fun. No, that makes a lot of sense. And again, I, I have got to dig deep in kind of the, the memory banks at this point, but I, I wholeheartedly <laughs> agree. I, I think um, a, as much uh, success that I that I did have, and I was able to to complete the courses and and like you said, sit down with with you know, First John and and read it and just enjoy the the ability to do that. Um, mm. Having those flashcards with me at all times, and you're waiting pretty much for anything uh and, and being able to to do that and i would always too i would write out you know a little phonetic spelling on there just my own little you know, so i wouldn't be embarrassed in class when when we're oh, trying sure. to or you know you have different things different tools where someone's maybe uh like an audio uh, a cd or something where someone's saying the vocab is like well boy that's not how i wrote it <laughs> uh and it's just a little more helpful is that being the same a thing? Yeah. It, yeah it's difficult to um to, to go about learning a language if you don't have your pronunciation right. And, and if I could just throw uh, something out there too, uh, you need to know that alphabet. Um, <laughs> I joked, uh, only slightly joking, that if at the end of you know, my third uh, Greek or Hebrew class, if the final only asked me to put the alphabet in order, oh man, I was going to be in trouble. And because I didn't, <laughs> I didn't just drill it in there until it was as natural as the English alphabet, and it slowed me down. Even in using the tools, when I'm looking up a vocab word I don't know, it slowed me down to have to sing this song in my head, uh, like a first grader. Uh, so yeah, learn learn that alphabet. And I would encourage folks too, if if you're gonna jump in there and, and go to Kairos Classroom and sign up and do a class, uh, maybe between now and whenever it starts. Man, hit that alphabet hard, and, and you'll be glad you did. That is a good word. Yeah. Well, I'm really excited. You and I have had the chance to talk before, and we're actually uh, able to do something pretty cool. We're going to partner up, and if if there are those listening or watching this that would like to get in there and learn uh, either Greek or Hebrew or both, but you know, probably not at the same time. That'd be quite the undertaking. But if, if you have a desire to learn the biblical languages – uh, Ryan's actually made it possible to where we can offer you 10% off. So you can start whatever, uh, you're a first time student, whatever classes that you sign up for, you can get 10% off there, uh, at kairosclassroom.com. Again, that's K A I R O S classroom.com. You can use the, uh, the discount code theology when you visit them, sign up for some classes. We'll of course put all the links in the show notes, um, we'll see the show notes for this with any resources that we mentioned and also the links to sign up at reasonabletheology.org slash episode 53. And so definitely check that out. So Ryan, I want to I thank you and give you a chance to just encourage folks again to, to head over there to kairosclassroom.com and sign up to learn some of these languages. Man, it's so good to be here and, and, and to talk with you. And, and, and seriously, I mean, 
the if you want this, if this is fascinating to you, then you can do it. I mean, that's 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 who it is. It's not a certain type of person. If if this is something that that is that is interesting and exciting to you, uh, come on, we, we we'd love to help you make yeah. this a, a lifelong a lifelong habit. Um, I, when you go when you go to the website, you'll go um, you know to Greek one or Hebrew one, whatever whatever class you want, and you'll see several options. We we, we try to give like a, a a weekday morning option, a weekday afternoon option, an evening option, sometimes a weekend option. Um, just, just for that, for that class that's going to meet once a week and you'll just find, find whichever one fits your schedule, um, which start date works for you yeah. and, and enroll right there. Excellent. Well, I'm hoping that this conversation for those that uh, joined us encourages them in a couple ways. One, just plant that seed that no, you can learn a biblical language. You can do this. And, and maybe they're heading to seminary. Maybe they're going to go a different route. Great. God bless you. And we, we hope it goes great. Uh, if, mm-hmm. If Kairos Classroom sounds like a great option for you, I want to encourage people to check that out. Uh, head to kairosclassroom.com. Again, you can get 10% off for any new students there. Uh, discount code theology when you do that. But check them out because it really is uh, an opportunity where you have the convenience. This is online. You can do it. Um, you know, obviously the classrooms are meeting live, so you have the benefit of meeting with people, going with real live teachers. You can interact with them. Uh, but at the same time, it's you're not in a, a seminary or a school environment. So it has a little bit of that mix of accountability and flexibility to really kind of push you and, and walk alongside you to where step by step you can really do this. So I want to encourage people to check that out. I want to uh, thank you, Ryan, not only for joining us for this conversation, but I, I want to thank you for really putting the work into creating something like this. I think this really fills a gap uh, that exists between – going full-fledged uh, in, into some formalized education for this or being off on your own. And the only other options I've personally come across have been uh, really just video-based, where it's, it's a resource that's created. It's a great resource. I've used them. I was one of those who picked one of those things up alongside my in-class instruction because I, I needed the help. But at the end of the day, uh, I couldn't ask them to go back and repeat something uh, in a different way or uh, ask if my pronunciation was correct, or you know all those things. Uh, uh, admit that I, I can't remember what a participle is in English, so how am I supposed to know it in Greek? Um, you have that opportunity in a classroom environment, and, and this is a way, again, an affordable, accessible way for people to check that out. So again, that's in the show notes, reasonabletheology.org slash episode 53. And this has been with our guest, Ryan Martin of Kairos Classroom. So, Ryan, thank you so much for joining me. Yes, thanks again for having me.